please welcome our moderator, President and CEO of Mizuho Securities USA, John S. Kudunas. With our distinguished panel, former President Felipe Calderon, the United Mexican States, former President Sebastian Piñera, the Republic of Chile, and former President Alvaro Uribe, the Republic of Colombia. Latin America is a word that is uh, described by a lot of the media as one unit. But essentially, there's a lot of different cultural issues and economic issues that surround that region. And uh, for example, growth in the last year has been down, on average, a significant amount, but there's some outliers, such as Colombia. So um, if you're looking to invest, and from a business point of view, it presents a lot of challenges, but also opportunities. Opportunities if you're able to understand the different countries' landscapes. So we are fortunate today to have three past presidents of Mexico, Chile, and Colombia, and hopefully we can discuss some of the similarities and the differences in how it pertains to this year's summit and the theme. There's been a signed energy, a new energy reform bill that has opened up the borders significantly to outside companies for oil and gas fields. How do you feel this has changed Mexico's economy and its environmental changes, challenges that takes place with that? Because the energy reform is allowing to private investment by first time in 70 years to go to explore and exploit natural gas, oil, upstream and all downstream, and refinery, transportation, petrochemical, and that will imply a huge change in the Mexican economy with an incredible potential, not only in investment and productions, which implies a very strong impact to the economic performance of the country, but also in competitiveness. Let me tell you that Mexico has the six largest natural, six largest reserve in natural gas in the world. And that will contribute to provoke, to provoke this independence, if I can say that, autonomy uh, so sources of energy for North, North America as a whole in probably four or six years. Second, it will increase the competitiveness of the economy. We made a set of reforms already, basically opening the, the economy even more, which it provided a lot of competitiveness for industry. When I took office, Mexico was this, the ninth largest exported of vehicles in the world. Nine, now is the fourth largest exported of vehicles in the world, surpassing the UK, Spain, even the United States as exporter. And now with this reform, having the cheapest natural gas in the, in the world, in this region, that will foster the competitiveness of Mexican economy. So I, I would say that this reform will have a very promising future for the country. And uh, is there any implication related with environment? Probably yes, but we need to explore that. I was quite interested in the conversation we had, or we, we have listening. Uh, we need to fix that issue related with the intensive use of water in, in, in these fracking processes. I am a geologist, but I'm very sure that the industry will find a way in which you can overcome any potential damages for the environment. The other is long term, is more related with more controversial, related with climate issue. But even though this discussion that we need to have one day, natural gas will be the transitional fuel for a new era. I mean, Natural gas could reduce the emission in the way that could phase out the use of coal, which is the most damaging to the environment. And natural gas, again, will be this transitional path to get a new era on that. So very promising future for Mexico coming from that reform. President Erebe, during your presidency in Colombia, you increased the security tremendously. And what that allowed also give confidence for foreign investment to come into your country. My question to you is, you know, what did that do in terms of the ability to hire people, job creation, and equality? The country began first to stop the growth of poverty. And in the middle of many difficulties, the financial crisis of the year uh, 2008, the closeness 
of the Venezuelan market and the collapse of the pyramids of narco trafficking in Colombia, we brought uh, poverty from 53 to 37. At this moment, it is around 30 percent. The country had an unemployment rate between 16 and 21. At the end of our administration, it was around 11. Now it is, roughly speaking, around in between 8 and 9. The country has increased social policies. But when speaking on Colombia, it is very important to know that in the second half of the last century, many governments reduced extreme poverty. The country was doing well. And the country began to suffer a lot and to stop making progress. At the moment, narco-trafficking and all the groups of narco-traffickers began to increase their activities. Therefore, we need to consider that there is one question for us. What has been the main cause? Terrorist groups, the main cause of the Colombian problems, or poverty? In my opinion, the terrorist groups. Because of the policies that were introduced before my administration, in the absence of terrorist groups, Colombia would have overcome poverty long ago. If I look at the history, uh, all three of the presidents overlapped at the same time. Um, is there any examples, any anecdotes that you want to say where you collaborated amongst the three of you together in some P3 function? I think the Pacific Alliance is the strongest example of what collaboration can achieve. Because as I said before, it's not only that we were, at, we, we were able to achieve free trade agreements, real free trade agreements, with all, up, all, almost no exception in our trade of goods and services, but also we integrated our capital markets, our stock exchanges. We opened our frontiers to free movement of capitals, free movement of people, so it's a real integration. It's, it's, it, it goes beyond just a commercial free trade agreement. But there is something else I would like to emphasize. Because as Felipe said, in Latin America, we have a very ideological debate. When we start discussing what can we do, I mean, we have to hear long speeches about imperialism and that everything is happening in Latin America has to be blamed on the US or Europe or whatever. So I think that the fact that we realized that we were sharing very key principles and values, because at, at the end of the day, what are the pillars that you need in order to become a developed country? The old pillars, which are necessary but not enough. Stable democracy, strong rule of law, free, open, competitive market economy, a sound economic policies and macroeconomic equilibrium. Those were values that we shared from the very beginning and therefore we were able to stick to them very strongly in the middle of a continent where those values are very weak or are being strongly opposed. But there is something new that we have to add to these pillars, which are the new pillars of development in this new society of knowledge and information. And again, here we found a very strong agreement from the very first moment. First of all, to improve the quality of our human capital, which means not only to improve the quality and coverage of education, but also of training, because most of our working force will never come back to the formal educational process. To strengthen and promote entrepreneurship and innovation, which sometimes is a dirty word in Latin America. To triple our investment rate in science and technology. To do a strong effort to defeat poverty and to a, obtain a better equality of opportunity, to improve also the quality of our demo democracy and our, in our institutions and our state. So I would say that in all those areas, which are the old and the new pillars 
that will have to be built or strength in order to be able to become a developed countries, we found a very strong natural alliance between these four countries. So that's another area where collaboration, which is, is very important because you understand that you're not alone, that really you are pushing values which are shared by other countries, particularly in the continent of Latin America where the, those values are not shared by the ALBA countries, and I don't know if they are really shared by the Mercosur countries. So I, that was another uh, area where collaboration was extremely useful and, uh, and, very, and very efficient. As a member of the Leadership Council, we really appreciate uh, all that you've done. And uh, thank you very much. How about a big round of applause?